welcome to Lunch for the Soul. I'm Melissa Wilson from Fox 26. This is that time we get to sit and talk. And today I'm hoping you will ask lots of questions because I have a specialist with her, us who has her very own special story and it is a dramatic one. So without further ado, please welcome, known as Goodbye Lupus Baby, Dr. Brooke Goldner. Welcome to Lunch for the Soul. Thank you so much. Well, I want to go back to talk about what happened when you were very young. Let's first of all talk about your diagnosis, and then I'm going to give you all a little spoiler alert. When, when modern-day treatments didn't work, this doctor, before she became a doctor, came up with her own idea of how to cure herself. So first of all, tell us about that diagnosis and what you went through. Absolutely, and it's great timing because uh, my diagnosis that I got when I was 16 is lupus, and it is uh, Lupus Awareness Month. Yesterday was Lupus uh, Day, World Lupus Day, and it is Lupus Awareness Month, so I'm really glad to be talking about this. But yes, uh, before I was a doctor or an author or a scientist, I was a patient, and, uh, and I was diagnosed at 16. I had arthritis, I had rashes, um, I had migraines, and by the time I was diagnosed, I was already in stage four kidney failure because lupus is a disease that can actually attack your organs. It's what makes it so dangerous and why uh, people have a shorter lifespan. Uh, it's in the top 20 causes of death for women under age 64 and in the top five causes of death for women of color. So it is a really, it is an aggressive illness that can affect many different organs. And when I was diagnosed at 16, they told me if I didn't do aggressive treatments like chemotherapy to shut off my immune system, that they didn't expect me to live longer than six months. So it was extremely severe, painful. My whole family was just uh, emotionally distraught. Um, and I came from an immigrant family where it was just do what your doctor says. This was before the internet. So there was no other things to look up. Uh, and I'm glad that I did. It's one of the reasons I became a doctor is my doctor saved my life. But it was two years of chemotherapy, high dose of steroids. I was taking seven different pills a day between 16 and 18 just to survive. Um, and it did work. My kidneys finally uh, went into remission. I still had kidney issues. You could see on a blood test that I had lupus. I had kidney issues, but I was no longer dying from the disease. And that's really what we call remission in Western medicine. Uh, and that's what I really was always hoping for. I got sick many times. I, uh, my family always kept me going. They're like, you still got to go to school. You still got life to live. Uh, so I kept working hard and studying and I listened to my doctors and uh, it was very difficult. I still lived in pain, even in remission. I took a lot of medicine, but I was able to graduate college. I was able to, to become a genetic scientist. I was able to go to medical school. But yeah, by the time I went to medical school, the lupus was causing blood clots and I was having mini strokes walking through the hospital where the world would split into two and I'd have to hold onto a wall because I was getting blood clots in my brain. It was a, it's a scary disease to live with. Okay, so let's talk about how diet plays a huge role in your recovery. Yeah, so I, I've got to say, you know, a lot of times people ask me how I thought to discover this, and I didn't. I, I'm a Western trained scientist and doctor. I was just glad medicines could save my life. That's what I always thought is, yes, it still didn't kill me. I'm back. There's, okay, I'll take a shot every day so I don't have blood clots, you know. Uh, but it was, it was an accident. I fell in love with Thomas Tadlock, and he's also a best selling author in metabolism. And, and his obsession when I met him, besides me, <laughs> was with there must be an optimal diet for human metabolism, that all of us should be able to lose fat easily, gain muscle easily. And even in his graduate studies, nobody seemed to knew, know what humans are supposed to eat, right? We know what lions should eat and giraffes should eat, but nobody knows what a human's supposed to eat, right? So that was his obsession. And so I asked him to change my diet because he wanted to marry a sick woman. I mean, to marry someone where I had to tell him, I can't have your children. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to become disabled probably soon and you're gonna to have to take care of me. And he just wanted to marry me anyway. So I asked him, could we, could I do your diet so I can lose weight and look good at the wedding? And so he created a diet for me uh, that had some adjustments in it for my own preferences. I didn't like to eat meat, but I ate lots of cheese and eggs and things. So he adjusted the diet uh, that became the first version of my protocol. And what happened was it worked. I, uh, I lost over 20 pounds. I went from a size 11 to size three in like three months. But at 28 years old, it was the first time since I was 16 that I had no symptoms of lupus. I had normal blood tests. You couldn't find lupus. My kidneys went back to normal after 12 years of illness. My kidneys were normal. The blood clots all were gone. And uh, that was 16 years ago. And I have never had a relapse. In spite of 12 years of having lupus every day, I've had 16 years with no lupus. I'm 45 years old. I've had two kids and I've never had a relapse. So when this happened to me, 
uh, we really decided this was something that we had to bring to the world. I always say, I have to save your life. And my, my husband says, I have to save your wife. So, so we released our protocol to the public for free. Uh, I'm doing a free Q&A on Instagram on Friday just as a public service. I try to do everything I can to bring this information to the public. And thankfully, I've been able to help thousands of people all over the world reverse not only lupus, but many different autoimmune diseases using the same protocol that we've really optimized over time uh, that, you know, we did the research to confirm that it is really pro uh, optimal immune function and cellular repair. And that's really what people need, whether they've got autoimmune disease or an infection or any other issue going on with their health. I think that is so awesome that you have decided you're going to help people and they can find you online and they can take some different types of classes that you have. What kind of autoimmune diseases are we talking about? Not just lupus, right? And then we do have some viewers joining us. If any of you have questions, please reach out. Ask Dr. Goldner. She's right here. We are live and we can answer your questions right here. So get going. If you have any questions about anything and how diet can make you healthier, no matter what the disease is. Yeah. So, you know, they say up to 60% of people with lupus have more than one autoimmune disease. And I found that to be true. Uh, and I actually believe that autoimmune disease is really one, there's one umbrella, right? Your immune system's attacking you instead of attacking viruses and bacteria, then you've got autoimmune. Lupus has certain antibodies, but then that's really how we differentiate. RA has different antibodies or rheumatoid arthritis is very common. Hashimoto's is one of the most common ones that I help people reverse. Um, mixed connective tissue disease, meaning you have symptoms and signs of a few different autoimmune. So we give you that one. Um, scleroderma, Sjogren's. I've had people come to me with so many uh, autoimmune diseases. Some of them I never even heard of in medical school because they're so rare, like birdshot uveitis, reversed completely, uh, as well as other things that are not autoimmune. I've had multiple people with glaucoma completely reverse the glaucoma, get vision back, um, help people with uh, Graves' disease. So many different illnesses that I was trained were irreversible and incurable. And yet the symptoms go away, the antibodies go away and people get back to living again. And it's just, it, it makes every day I was ever sick with lupus worthwhile that I can help so many other people get their lives back. And it seems like it is such an easy thing to do, but we know it's not, right? I mean, when you say, okay, your prescription today is vegetables. Oh, I can do that. <laughs> but, but it's easier said than done. So walk us through what a typical protocol would look like and just how many vegetables you truly have to eat. <laughs> I always say, we're not talking, you know, some French fries and broccoli just wrapped I would be fries. very beloved if I told people eat fries and heal, right? That'd be fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, I always say it's actually, it's simple, but it's not always easy. You know, because it is pretty simple. Take this food. I, I did the math the other day because I was working with an accountant and she goes, this feels hard. I said, no, it's simple math. Watch. Take this food and put it in this hole by the end of the day. Right. Like that's simple math. Right. Like this food, this hole in this many hours done. Right. It, the protocol is simple. What's hard about it is all up here. Uh, sometimes it's inconvenient. Uh, sometimes there's peer pressure. Come on, it's someone's birthday, eat the cake. You know, I always say, but I sang the song. Why do I have to eat the cake, right? Uh, but there's, there's, you know, what if I'm traveling, this and that. There's so many reasons that your mind can come up with to make it difficult. Uh, and I always say that the exit to doing the program is always lit up like the exit door in an airplane, but you don't want to jump off mid-flight, right? You want to get to your destination. So the struggles are all here. And actually, before I started teaching my protocol, I became a trauma specialist and I help people with reversing depression, anxiety, all these different issues. So I find all the skills that I have are useful in treating food addiction because that's what it really is. If I can tell you, eat these foods, and your disease can go away, and you're coming up with reasons not to, that's addiction, that's emotional, that's depression, right? Because logically, why wouldn't you? But yeah, hypernourishment is the protocol. So the Goodbye Lupus Protocol focuses on hypernourishment, which is an intentional overdose in the nutrients your body uses to repair damage to your cells and have the immune system function properly. And so in order to get that overdose, you've got to eat really high amounts of foods and things that most people would never eat that much of. So for example, uh, to count as hypernourishment, you want to get at least a pound a day of raw, uncooked, cruciferous vegetables or spinach, right? So that's a lot of salads, or you can make green smoothie recipes. We have free green smoothie recipes at smoothieshred.com you can make, and you just shove the greens in the blender. Then you need to have omega-3 fatty acids. If you're not someone who's particularly sick, a handful of flax or chia seeds a day in the smoothie will work. If you're fighting disease, you're probably gonna wanna have about a half cup a day, or you can use a few tablespoons of flax oil if you tend to get constipated or, or you need something that bloats you less. And then water intake. 
Water's really important to put out those fires of inflammation. And most people are severely dehydrated. So their immune systems don't work properly. Their cells can't repair themselves. So 96 ounces of water a day is the minimum we usually use for adults that are, you know, about 100 pounds or more uh, to get their hypernourishment in. So the easy way to get this all in is you put the water, flax and chia in the greens in a blender, you blend it up, you put a straw in it, and then you drink your way to health. Um, If you don't like smoothies, you can you know, do broccoli dipped in guacamole and get it in that way. You can put it in salads. But, you know, that part is just the planning, right? But that is the ingredients that you use for hypernourishment. Now, when people are very, very sick, I'll make all of their diet come from those types of foods and they'll be on a raw diet. But for many people, if they add that to their diet, they already start to feel better. And then they start to crave healthier foods in general, because, you know, if you have a green smoothie and you feel like you've got my level of energy and you're feeling really good, and then you have a burger and fries at lunch and you're feeling achy and tired, your body's kind of tells you what you need to do. And it gets a bit easier to, to move out of that addiction and into real health. But I'm obsessed with your passion about this. I feel like you make me so fired up about a green smoothie. I just want to go make one and pretend it's pistachio ice cream or something. (laughs) (laughs) But you've seen for yourself how it has changed your life. And I was able to meet you. We we did an interview months ago. And I believe you told me that you were told you wouldn't even probably be able to have babies when you were younger, right? Because you were so sick. And then you absolutely got well. you absolutely have children. Oh, that's my Solomon. That's how we knew that the lupus was really gone was when I had my first child, Solomon, uh, who's just in the news today because he wrote his own book. Uh, I'm really proud of him. Um, but he, uh, so there he is. That's Solomon's the big one. And then Alex has, there's Alex, my younger one. So um, yeah, so I was told between with, with lupus, uh, it's very dangerous to have children. One, I had kidney failure and blood clots. So that's not mm-hmm. really good for people who are pregnant. Also, people with autoimmune disease, the immune system can attack the baby and they could have heart block and need heart surgery as an infant. Uh, They could have uh, lupus antibodies in their bloodstream that actually makes them sick. So it is a dangerous thing to do for the mom and the baby. And I know with my husband, you know, I told him I was never going to be able to have children or I could die. So he was not interested in children. He just wanted me as long as he could have me. But after four years of perfect health, normal blood tests. I was working out every day. I had a six pack. I was like, I, I couldn't believe how good I felt. I was so hyper. I mean, this is me all the time. Uh, and my residency program, they were worried about me because all the other residents were appropriately depressed and exhausted. And I was showing up to work like, hey, let's save some lives. And they're like, okay, this is weird. Um, but I just felt so good. And so after four years of feeling that good, That's when we decided um, that it made sense to try to have a baby because my body was healthy. My mom's in that picture. She actually wanted to carry the baby for me. She was terrified. Uh, Everybody was scared, but I was only going to do it knowing I was healthy. And they tried to send me to the high risk OBGYN and they said they hadn't seen such a healthy pregnant lady. So they followed me. Normal, normal pregnancy. I did have a C-section because Solomon was butt first, which is totally his personality. Uh, (laughs) So he could not come out any other way. Um, And I was fine. And my pregnancy weight was gone nine days after I gave birth, which is not normal for people who lupus or not lupus, right? So my metabolism truly was fast. So my husband had that he cracked the code. And two, we realized metabolism is not just linked to how much body fat you have. Metabolism is linked to how well your body can respond to what it needs to do in real time. And so that was when we knew we had something to bring to the public was how could I of all people have a healthy pregnancy and not have lupus come back? And that's when we started really digging into the research to understand what we did because we didn't think it was, I don't think it's good integrity or just a good thing to do in general to tell people to do what you did when you don't even know if you're better because of what you did or in spite of what Mm -hmm. you did. Like so many people do that. Oh, eat, you know, nothing but this and you'll cure yourself. I, as a doctor, a scientist and a, former patient, I refused to do that. So we spent over a year reverse engineering it, understanding the cellular biology of nutrition and the immune system, and then testing it for free on people like from the Lupus Foundation to make sure it was entirely reproducible before we brought it to the public. Let's get to some questions because we've got some viewers who are here now. We have Melanie. She's talking about a certain type of lupus and RA, rheumatoid arthritis as well. Would this help her, do you think? Yeah, so let me see. Oh, I can see it now. I have my camera in front of my screen. 
Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, again, the protocol is not specific to a disease. It's specific to cellular repair and immune health. So, absolutely. It has worked for discoid lupus, for lupus in the brain. I had someone who was getting multiple seizures a day because the lupus was in her brain. The seizure stopped in the first week. Um, I've had people, I've actually published uh, getting people off of the kidney transplant list using my hypernourishment protocol where their kidneys start working again. Just had someone get off the lung transplant list from lupus in his lungs. And he's a guy in his 70s and five weeks in, they, they took him off the transplant list because he was too healthy. So it's really specific to repairing the damage to your cells. And while a lot of people have heard that your liver can repair itself, our organs in general are programmed to repair themselves. So if we get the nourishment in, in time, you can have those organs repair. Scar tissue doesn't repair though. So sometimes people have been sick for decades, they might get some repair and then they level off, but you can still get the disease antibodies to go away so that they can continue to have good health and not get worse. So okay. yes, do it. <laughs> All right. And Jamie, so you, she's asking if, would it help arthritis? And you've said, yes, it would. Now we've got Brittany here who talks about how her, she's got multiple autoimmune issues and she's been swelling so bad. She has a hole in her toe bone. She can barely walk some days and it would be a blessing to get rid of these. Do you hear dramatic stories like that? Do you feel like it could help someone at this point? Every single day. You know, we have a, a free Facebook group called Smoothie Shred where people can just join for support. My husband and I run it together. And uh, there's one lady named Kim Pettis. Uh, hi, Kim. She is, she's always watching and she always tells us we can share a story. She's on disability, on welfare. Um, she was in a wheelchair and her whole body was just ravaged by autoimmune lupus, uh, couldn't walk, couldn't function. And uh, so she just watched all my free content. She couldn't afford to meet with me or to do a program. She just watched my classes, came to every interview and did it. And she is, she is walking, she's fit. Uh, she posts every day to just show people what's possible. So it's something that, you know, you really don't know how much better you can get until you do it. And for every person, it's worth it to just get as healthy as you can get. You know, it's never too late. No. And Tina has a really good question. She wants to know if it has to be organic vegetables. Actually, no. Um, listen, I still think it's better to have organic, right? I mean, I, I do now that I can. But when I first did the program, I was an intern who, and I did my residency at UCLA Harbor. So I'm in LA with a, with a studio that I couldn't even afford. Thank goodness I had a boyfriend sending me money, right? I couldn't, so there was no chance that I was buying organic produce. I was buying whatever I could get. Um, one of the tricks I used to do is I'd go to the farmer's market 30 minutes before closing and say, how much for whatever you have left? And I wouldn't even know what I was getting. I'd just shove it in the blender. This is a vegetable, I don't know. You know so, um, so, you know, you don't, it doesn't have to be organic. What I've found is, the power of the, the, the nutrients in the, in the produce, it, it outweighs any potential negativity from the pesticides. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the soil is more nutrient dense and organic, so you get more bang for your buck and you're not getting any chemicals, but it has not stopped people from recovering. Kim mm -hmm. couldn't afford organic, I couldn't afford organic, and we still get better because what you need is the vitamins, the minerals, the antioxidants, mm -hmm. all those phytonutrients are still there and they can still help you. All right, let's talk water because Melanie says, if I drink that much water every day, I'd feel so bloated, she wouldn't even be hungry. How do people overcome that feeling of drowning basically by drinking so much water? You know, it just takes commitment and practice. I mean, and what's the most building up to it, right? No, you don't have to. I mean, listen, when I started doing this, I only drank things with caffeine because I thought everything else was a waste of time. I was a medical student going into my first year residency. So I drank Diet Coke and coffee. That's what I drank. The next day when I said I'm going to do this program, I bought a gallon jug. Here's my gallon jug. I practice what I preach. Um, and I bought a gallon jug and I started carrying that to the hospital every day. And I drank a gallon of water a day from then on, which is 128 ounces. So, you know, um, for me, I'm very stubborn about things. If I make a decision, I just do that. Um, other folks need to work their way up either because they have medical issues. I've helped people with MS reverse their illnesses, even visible on MRI. Uh, but a lot of people with MS have problems with they can't control their bladder, right? So, so a lot of people with different issues have struggles around this. Women who've had babies have trouble sometimes with controlling their bladder. So um, a lot of it just takes game planning. And that's what we really teach people. You have to make plans. So one, getting your water in early in the day so you're not waking up 10 times a night. Um, two, a lot of people who switch from unhealthy eating to healthy eating suddenly stop having salt and then they start drinking a lot of water, which makes their body dump all the water out as quickly as possible because they're trying to maintain the blood sodium levels. So make sure that you do still have a little sodium in diet if you're having a huge amount of water. Um, but it just takes practice. One thing you can do that helps is instead of sipping all day, uh, consolidate, split all the water up into like five glasses 
and have one glass every two hours. And that way you have a big intake and then a big pee. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> We're almost out of time, but I want to get to this. It's really important. So Jennifer's saying I can't eat broccoli, cauliflower, spinach because of GI issues, no nuts because of diverticulitis, basically nothing gas forming. And then Melanie says, yes, me too. I have irritable bowel syndrome, these foods I can't do. So what do you suggest for people for, for issues like these or for food sensitivities who just can't get in some of these important yeah. cruciferous oh. vegetables and other types? <laughs> Well, for people that um, that are really struggling to make it happen, you can always work with me. I help people through all these things. But it's really important not to give up on the foods that you need the most. So unfortunately, in Western medicine, they kind of do that if it hurts, don't do it approach, but it weakens you. So for example, um, I've helped people reverse IBS, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, all sorts of inflammatory bowel diseases. And all of these people were told, don't eat fiber. But fiber is essential for health, it's essential for your immune function, mm -hmm. and it's essential for gut strength. So it's like if someone says, oh, it, it's hard for me to walk. Okay, then just keep sitting. Guess what? You'll never walk again. You yeah. have to do it. So for a lot of these folks, the smoothies work well. Um, diverticulitis, you could totally do it. You can do it with the chia flax or the flax oil if you're scared, you're blending it in a smoothie. That smoothie can travel nice and gently through the body and out. But you do need to have these kind of foods. Maybe start more gently, like with spinach or kale mm -hmm. or chard. Um, mm -hmm. But ultimately, you do need to build up the bowel strength. So unfortunately, that's been a problem that's perpetuated by doctors, is they tell people not to eat the foods their body needs the most because it feels better in the moment mm -hmm. and causes more damage long term. Well, this conversation has made me want to say goodbye autoimmune disease for all of our viewers even more than ever. Dr. Brooke Goldberg, thank you for your time. Our viewers here are saying, hey, you know what? I'm following you on Facebook now. For any of those classes or more information, tell us quickly how they can find you. Yeah, so right now my classes are online for free the rest of the week. If you go to at Goodbye Lupus on uh, Instagram or Facebook or go to GoodbyeLupus.com, click on the classes, watch and learn exactly how to do the protocol, see all the case studies and different people. And then I have a live Q&A, Instagram Live and Facebook Live uh, on Friday at uh, 9 a.m. or I'm sorry, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time where I'm just going to be up there just answering questions for people. We're going to do it over three different types of social media all at the same time. Uh, I can do it. I just ba-bam, ba-bam, ba-bam uh, and answer all the questions just to make sure people know what they're doing and feel empowered to take back their health. Well, if no one can fire them up to take back their health, and if it's not you, I don't think anybody can. Thank you for sharing your enthusiasm for life, for healing people. Thank you for using your story to go into medical school to make such a big difference. You're healing people every day. Congratulations on your success. And I hope our viewers will take you up on it. Really great to see you here today. Great to see you too. Thanks so much for having me on. All right. Take care of yourself. Bye.